I chose pharmacy because I wanted to help people take their medications correctly. However, in my final year, I learned pharmacists were not allowed to answer a patient's questions and had to refer the patient to the doctor. This didn't make sense. Patients were dying because no one had taught them how to manage their medications safely. During my residency, I received permission to conduct drug histories and discharge counseling. There were no courses to take, so I had to teach myself. I knew I had to introduce myself as a pharmacist to the patient, but never expected my very first patient to ask, what is a lady farmer doing in my hospital room? I received my PharmD degree from the University of Cincinnati under the direction of Dr. Don Frankie. Dr. Frankie was a role model and mentor to me. Finally, I found someone who believed in patient education, and he introduced me to publishing. Our class of six graduated, but today is very bittersweet for me because one of the people who nominated me for this award was Professor Bob Cluxton on your far left. We were looking forward to seeing each other at this meeting, but Bob passed away last November. After graduation, I returned to Canada and developed an ambulatory patient pharmacy where every patient was counseled in a private room. One day, a physician saw my crib notes and challenged me to write a book for health professionals to use in their practices. Hmm, I thought, that's a good idea. I worked on this book for five years in my spare time, but could not find a publisher because I was a pharmacist and not a physician. I was going to burn the manuscript if God did not send a publisher. This was the only time in my life I was ready to give up. I received a call five days later. My prayer was answered. The first book led to more books and then an offer from APHA to become Director of Clinical Affairs. At APHA, I helped form the section on clinical practice and served as editor of the Handbook of Non-Prescription Drugs. It was exciting to work at APHA, and I had the opportunity to work with Dr. Gloria Frankie, who became another mentor. Another big change in my career happened when Simon & Schuster asked me to write a book for consumers. I knew this would require at least a year. I had always wanted to do patient education full time. I decided to create my own job and formed Consumer Health Information Corporation. I called the company Consumer Health because I had learned at APHA that our profession can advance more quickly. Once consumers experience good patient counseling and become loyal to their pharmacists, the pharmaceutical companies started asking us to develop patient education programs. I was under budget on my first project and wrote a check to Merck for $500. They told me to keep the check because this is what is called profit. Since then, we have developed a wide variety of programs that have increased patient adherence in clinical trials, product launches, medical devices, and consumer awareness programs. Teaching has always been very important to me as a way to give back to pharmacy. My students convinced me years ago that Social media could be used in consumer awareness. Together, we developed a Twitter on pet health tips. Thank you, APHA, for changing my career path and leading me to a clinical practice I had never dreamed possible. I would like to thank Tom Manigan. A few years ago, Tom allowed me to bring my six students to an APHA awards ceremony so they could meet pharmacy leaders and ask questions about their career path. APHA made a huge impression on them that evening. I wish you could have heard their comments to me the next day. Thank you, APHA, for also introducing me to so many wonderful colleagues, including Dr. Lucinda Main and Dr. Ellie Volk, who nominated me for this award. I accept this award with sincere humility and gratitude.